What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, Zika Milligan, the villain from the Trilligan, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, I had uh, made an alliance with Tosaka. They're living with us now. Like, they, they literally done encroached on our crib. I think we ended the, we ended, we ended last episode doing our little magecraft training where we do the meditation. February 4th, day five, fate, new life. Let's get into it. Okay. I feel the warm glow of the sun. I wake up, my head dizzy to the sensation of cold air on my cheek. Must be a draft. Huh? I'm in the shed. I get up and shake my head two, three times in an effort to wake myself. Oh, right. I fell asleep like this. After my nightly routine, training to fortify my senses, I must have been too lazy to go back to my room. From how light it is, it must be just before six. Crap, I need to get breakfast ready. I fold my blanket up, pick up all the broken shards from my failed strengthening attempts last night, and head back to the house to wash my face. So cold. Is that snow? The moment I step outside the shed, I realize just how chilly it is out. Miyama is typically warm even in the winter, but the temps here on the mountainsides can still get chilly. And I wash my face with ice cold tap water, which finally gets my mind going. All right, I'm completely awake now. Once my mind's woken up, all the things I'd rather not be thinking about, like the current situation, come rushing back. All right, I don't have time to putter around washing my face. The time is 5.55. There's a ton to do, but first I need to head back to my room and check on Saber. Yeah, I did leave my room without telling her. I should at least explain myself. I wouldn't want to upset Saber. She could cook my ass. Going to the shed in the middle of the night is a ritual for me, so I'm sure she'll understand as long as I explain myself. Once I talk to Saber, then I should start making breakfast. The sucker says she doesn't need breakfast, so I need, just need to make extra for Saber. Oh, I should go buy more ingredients now that I'll be cooking for more people. I should write that down before I forget. Huh? Forget? Huh? I have this nagging feeling that I'm forgetting something really important. I, I can guess what it is! <coughs> Fujine, uh, 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 Sakura. Uh. Oh crap, it's already six. I need to hurry or I won't make it. Well, I, I can't remember whatever it is. It's probably not important. I slowly open the door. The room is just as I left it. There's no sign of Saber waking up in the morning of the night. Fuck. There's no sign of Saber waking up in the middle of the night and searching my room. Doesn't seem like she noticed I snuck out. Well, that's a light down. I thought Saber would have noticed. She don't fuck with you. Unless she was just in that deep of a sleep because she requires a lot of rest. All right. Maybe that's what she meant. Maybe that's what she meant when she said she needs to sleep often. She's sleeping as close to me as possible so she can rush right over and something does happen. Whatever the case, it shouldn't make much of a difference as long as I'm in the compound. The bounded field would detect any enemy intruders. I should be able to defend myself for at least a moment, which should give Saber enough time to get me. Yeah, and the place that, and the shed has plenty of places for me to hide. Anyway, I don't think I'll get scolded for what I did last night. I thought I would explain myself to Saber, but that doesn't seem necessary now. Besides, I'd hate to wake her up if she's still sleeping. Saber! I'm going to prepare breakfast. I'll make some for you too, but you'll need to get up if you're still sleepy. I'll come back, so keep resting if you need to. After speaking softly to her, I head out of my room as quietly as I can. There's nobody in the living room. I open the refrigerator and plan out what I can make for breakfast. Yeah. Morning, you sure get up early. My goodness, she looks like a zombie. Tosaka walks in looking obviously cranky. That reminds me actually, somebody told me, somebody in the comments, I forget who it was. 
Let me check. I got I got to give you your your, your due. Adam D N three H I. He told me that I need to read through these abilities. I gotta make sure I pay attention. I gotta make sure I read these properly. It's like important. So I'm gonna just look at these right quick. I, I skimmed through them before, but you know, let's pay, let's let's take some time to pay a little more attention to it, right? Magic resistance is A, cancels all mage craft below A. Modern mages cannot hurt Saber. Riding B, the riding ability, can ride most things better than the average person, but can't ride beasts that are demonic and holy ranked beasts. Intuition A. The ability to constantly sense the best course of action for oneself during battle. A well-honed sixth sense is akin to prognition, precognition. It deduces disturbances that interfere with vision and hearing by half. Mana burst wraps magical energy around her weapon and her on or her body and improves its abilities by releasing that energy in an instant. Other words, it's a jet thruster made of magical energy. Not only does Saber use magical energy for sword play, she also utilizes it for defense and movement. She is able to fight Berserker disp I'm not reading all this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it though, I promise. I'll, def I'll definitely will read it, but maybe not now. <laughs> Tosaka walks in looking obviously cranky. Tosaka! What's going on? Did something happen? Nothing. I'm always like this in the morning, so don't fucking worry about it. Looks like a stagger through the living room like a drunken ghost. She's in fucking invisible too. She thinks she Ogi Oshino with the black ass eyes. Hey, are you okay? Your eyes don't look right. I said don't worry about it. I wake up once I wash my face. Uh, how do I get to the bathroom again? Take that hallway. If you're gonna wash your face, there's a washroom in the hallway near the entrance. Oh, right. I don't know how much she heard, but Tosaka just waves a hand and walks away. And then, the doorbell rings, announcing a guest's arrival. Shiro, someone's here! I hear Tosaka's voice from the hallway. Oh, don't worry about it. The only people who ever come over at this hour are family. It's gotta be Sakura. She has a spare key, so I don't need to go to the door. Honestly, I keep telling Sakura she doesn't need to ring the bell. It's not Sakura, it's Berserker! He politely, he politely rung the doorbell to, to, so, so he could have tea time with us, you know? Sakura is like family, so she can come in without being bothered by the, about the doorbell. But she's always polite enough to ring the doorbell to let me know she's here. I think that's... I think that's one of the good things about Sakura. But one of these days, she's going to wear herself wear herself out from politeness. Hold on. Sakura is here. Crap! I run through the hallway. Being angry at my own stupidity is going to have to wait. Right now, I need to rush to the entrance and send Sakura home before she runs into Tosaka. But it's too late. At the entrance... Tosuke is greeting the guest, even though I didn't ask her to, and... Huh? Sakura seems surprised. Sakura stands at the, at the entrance until Sakura's in the hallway. The two of them are staring at each other. The air is growing tense. Good morning, Miss Mato. Are you surprised to see me here? Tosaka looms in the doorway, appearing to look down at Sakura. Miss Tosaka, what the fuck are you doing at my nigga house? Hold on, bro. Stop. Sakura is utterly bewildered. If you come over here again, I'll have to beat your ass. That's my man. Back off, wench. Back off, you vixen. <laughs> bro. She looks up at Tosaka, fear in her eyes. This is bad. I can't manage to get a word out. The two of them ignore me as they continue to stare at each other. There's no room for me to butt in here. The only thing I can do right now is try to think of how to explain the situation to Sakura. But before I could come up with a good excuse. Senpai, Senpai um, what's, th what's the meaning of this? Sakura looks over at me, almost begging for help. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a long story. Uh, it's not that complicated. I just started living here. 
Though Saga's response is extraordinarily blunt. Shit is not helping. She just cuts me off and gets right to the point. Senpai, is this true? The short answer is yes. Things happen and that's how Saga's gonna be staying here for a while. Sorry for not telling you this earlier. And sorry you got blindsided first thing in the morning. Oh, please do not apologize. I was certainly surprised, but do not worry about it. But what you said earlier is that... That's right. This is something that Shiro and I agreed on together. The head of the household agreed, so it's pretty much a done deal. Do you understand what that means, Miss Mata? Understand what? You seem to have been taking care of Shiro for a while now, but that won't be necessary now. I'd rather you not come here for your own good. Hold on. Sakura looks down and falls silent. You could have said that a little nicer. And after a chilling silence, I do not know. Hold on! Uh huh, come again? I said, I do not know what you mean, I mean, Miss Tosaka. Wait, Sakura. Please excuse me, Senpai. I'll be using your kitchen. Hold on. She said, fuck out of here with that bullshit. She said, fuck out of here with that bullshit. Look, she all mad and shit. Sakura bows to me and walks into the house. She heads toward the living room, heading right past Osaka and flatly ignoring her. So Sakura just stands there aghast. I'm no different. I've never seen Sakura act like that, so I don't know what to say. Well, that comes as a surprise, but there isn't the only one. Hey, Tosaka. How did you know Sakura always came to my house? I never told you she came by to help me out with housework. Huh? Oh, well, I just heard rumors. That was just a coincidence. What's more surprising to me is that she's so energetic and happy here. She's completely different here than when she's at school. So Sakura must be really surprised, given how annoyed she sounds. Which means so Sakura knows Sakura pretty well at school. She mad that I got her all happy and you got her all bored and shit. She jealous. You jealous. Sakura seems to know Tosaka too. Two of them appear to have a good senior and underclassman relationship I was unaware of. But that aside. Actually, I'm surprised too. I've never seen Sakura so snappy before. Sakura is no different here than when she's at school. I'd say what we just saw was out of the ordinary. Well, that was bad. I didn't know Sakura was so stubborn. If I'd known, I would have made you explain everything to Ashira. Obviously. Compared to Tosaka's merciless explanation, I would have handled that a lot better. What's done is done. What do you mean this is bad? Of course this is bad. This house might turn into a battlefield. I was harsh with Sakura to try and drive her from the house so innocent people like her won't get caught up in the war. Now it's going to be a lot harder to get her out of here. That was you being harsh? I thought you were just bullying her. Hey, is that slander right here? I was just being honest. But what should we do about Sakura? At this point, she's not going to leave easily. Well, we have to do something. So does Sakura only come for breakfast? Or do you force her to come for dinner too? I'm trying to make it sound bad. Yeah, she comes every morning, but not as often for dinner. I see. Now she's gonna wanna come every night. Huh? Every night for what? As I tilt my head in confusion, so Sokka sighs in disbelief. This nigga's stupid. Soon after. So Sakura remains in the living room while Sakura begins preparing breakfast in silence. Nigga! My fault. Soon after, so Sakura remains in the living room while Sakura begins preparing breakfast in silence. I was a little worried about leaving Tosaka and Sakura alone in the same room, but I'm not stupid enough to forget about Saber. It seems like Sakura is mad about Tosaka being here, so things will just get worse if Saber comes out too. And then Saber comes out. 
which is why I decided to explain the situation to Saber. So there you have it. Sakura. Oh, the girl who's here is named Sakura. She, but she's an ordinary girl, not a major or anything. So we can't have her getting dragged into the Holy Grail War. If possible, I'd like her to stay away from the house for a, for a while without ever knowing why. What the hell? I didn't come here to consult her on how to get Sakura away from here. Anyway, Sakura's acting real weird this morning. Tosaka's the reason, but I don't want to upset her even, even more. Well, you see, Sakura's surprised because some strangers here. So she'll get even angrier if, you, if she sees you. Or, am, I, am I being rude or something, Saber? Not at all. I understand what you are trying to say, Shiro. You want me to wait here, correct? Yeah, I really appreciate that. I'll come back for you after I see Sakura out so you can eat breakfast then. Saber nods quietly. I'm so glad Saber's so understanding. What a sweetheart, I love her. Okay. I'm worried about what's happening in the living room, so watch hurry back. Shiro. What's up, Saber? You have no obligation to explain yourself in situations like this, but you should calm down a bit. Your words and behavior are noticeably diso disordered. Huh? Am I panicked? Yes, you are. If you intend to return to the living room, I suggest you calm yourself before you do so. What a sweetheart. I love her. Saber's advice is given in her usual tone. And... Breakfast begins as usual, like nothing happened. Here you go, senpai. Would you like some too, Miss Tosaka? Sakura hands me my bowl of rice. She's acting like her usual self. I don't know what happened while I was gone, but the tension between the two seems to have dissipated. At least on the surface. Okay, uh, I'll take a bowl. Tosaka hesitates a little before accept- Oh, what the heck. Okay, I'll take a bowl. I'll take a bowl. Tosaka hesitates a little before accepting the rice bowl. Sakura smiles as she puts the bowl of push but but that the Sakura I am hot all of a sudden. Sakura smiles as she puts bowls of miso soup, egg omelet, and other dishes on the table. How why you specify egg omelet? Is there another way to make omelets? So Sakura watches the table filling up, looking utterly flummoxed. Tosaka, I thought you didn't eat breakfast. If someone makes it for me, I'll eat it. It's only polite, you know. But as long as you're okay with it, then let's see. Uh, sorry I made you get everything ready, Sakura. Please, don't worry about it. This is my job. I'll start eating too. Lucky you. Making your junior classmate prepare breakfast for you? Who died and made you king to deserve that kind of treatment? Well, I'll grill you about that later. For now, let's eat. The three of us bow politely and begin breakfast. Dang, nobody's talking. I guess the mood isn't that tense. Our breakfasts are usually pretty light on conversation. Sakura and I are really all that talkative, so it's no shock meals are so quiet. But why does breakfast feel so chaotic every day? Oh, because Fu Fujimura is not here. Wait a minute. I get another nagging feeling. Senpai, um, was the fish too salty for you this morning? No, that's not it. But I just have a bad feeling like I'm forgetting something. What could it be? I try convincing- I try to convince myself that it's probably not important since I can't remember. I feel like that's a terrible mistake. I'm gripped by this sense of dread. Like I'm ignoring a fatal disease or something. Oh well. I bet it's not that big a deal. Then you go outside and find Fujimura's corpse on your front line. Alright. That's what's gonna happen, I'm calling it. And my controller just died. Alright. I see how it is. That's what we're doing today, okay. I try to just shove the thought thoughts from my mind as I go back to eating. Just then, morning! Oh man, overslept. Fujine comes bursting in. I forgot. How could I have forgotten this? 
I guess I tried to forget my problems rather than deal with them. Shiro, food. Fujine situates herself in a normal spot. Good morning, Fujimura Sensei. The two greet her in unison. Here you go, Miss Fujimura. It's not much, but please dig in. Sakura hands her a rice bowl with her usual smile. Hmm. Fujine takes the bowl and tilts her head in confusion. She senses something is strange, but doesn't know exactly what it is. Fujine quietly chews her food. Is she stupid? And after finishing the whole bowl of rice, she leans over to whisper in my ear. Hey, Shiro. Why is Tosaka here? Uh, she's gonna stay here for a while starting today. I stick to the facts. Oh, Tosaka does some... Tosaka does some pretty weird stuff. Yeah, she's a strange one. The way she is at school, she's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Oh, so, so she's gonna be spending the night here from today on? Fujine seems to accept this and takes a big gulp of her miso soup. Oh, snap! She is not accept- Okay, okay. What do you mean, staying with you? <laughs> The table suddenly flips violently. She pulls out a large dagger and shanks everybody in the house. Luckily, Sakura was sitting out of the path of the flying food, while Tosaka had already moved away, apparently predicting what was about to happen. So I'm the only one that ended up splattered. Ooh! Oh, that's hot! What the freak, Fujine? Don't, don't you realize this hot miso? Don't you realize there's hot miso soup, piping hot rice, and scorching meatballs in a pot? You burn me if you spilled those on me. Bro, why are we having food from a hot pot for breakfast anyway? Oh. Shut your mouth! What are you thinking, Shiro? Were you hoping to be the protag of a rom-com letting a girl stay over your house? Uh, even I can't laugh at a joke like this. Sick. I was not trying to make you laugh. Oh my goodness, that stings. I'm getting burned here. Sakura, give me a towel. Here you go. I've got you a cold, wet towel. Thank you. Whoa. Just found chicken meatball in my shirt. It's freaking hot. Forget the towel. You need to explain yourself, Shiro. Is it some sick joke, is it? Of course not. You know I don't like to kid around with these things, right? Anyway, Tosaka's staying here. Complain all you want, but it's already been decided, so there's not much point. OBJECTION! Uh, I don't know what your intention is, but I can't allow it. Big sister will not allow you to live with a girl under your roof. Fujine roars. Well, that's how I expected it to happen. Fujine's my guardian, and she's also my school teacher. I don't, I don't think I'm getting out of this situation with a hundred whacks from a wooden sword, or even a hundred cuts from a real one. But unfortunately, I have to find a way to live with this. Yo, can you let this go? I'm not doing anything wrong, and Tosaka and I aren't in that kind of relationship. It's just, we ended up in this situation by accident, and I'm letting her use one of the rooms for now. Shut up! I will not allow it! I won't allow her to stay. I don't know what's going on with Tosaka, but send her home stat. She's not even willing to listen. What is her issue? This is bad. I guess she's not as easy to convince as I thought. I thought it'd be pretty easy since she's kind of stupid. Miss Fujimura, you say you don't approve of me staying here, but I already stayed over last night. Tosaka's so casual about how she puts it. Her words seem to be like cold water dumped on Fujine's head. Come, come, come again? Like I said, Emiya let me stay over last night. Well, actually, I've been here since Saturday evening. So I've technically stayed over two nights already. Right now I'm staying in one of the guest rooms in the outbuilding and my luggage is already there. What do you think, Miss Fujimura? I'm already staying here at this point. The color drains from Fujine's face. <laughs> Sh -sh Shiro, how, how dare you? Did you not even consider how Kiritsugu would have reacted if he was around? What would he have thought? My old man would have definitely been happy about it. Something about a man's worth or whatever. 
Ah, uh, I can't even argue that. Kirisuga was definitely a ladies' man. I get it, so he passed his bad habits down to you. Shiro, you freaking idiot. Ujine grabs me by my throat and chokes me to death. Well, my old man did always teach me to protect girls. I'm not as chivalrous as my old man was, but I still agree. Even so. What, you want me to help you out? Guys have it pretty tough. Because of my chivalrous upbringing, I do have to keep in mind, cold-hearted as she is, Rin is still a girl. I beg of you. I can't get out of this myself. I need your silver tongue here. I nod in Tosaka's direction as Fujine shakes me. Okay, I'll make this quick. Miss Fujimura, the only thing you'll get from shaking Emi is a weak squeak, so please stop. If you keep it up, you might even shake the breakfast out of him. Uh, if you think if you think that look on your face is gonna scare me, you've got another thing coming, Tosaka. I'm an educator and Shiro's instructor. I will never approve of you staying over at his house. Ujine takes her hands off of me and turns to Tosaka. It must be your feral instincts kicking in. She must have thought Tosaka would pounce on her if she kept her full attention on me. Why? There's plenty of students in our school to live in boarding houses. Isn't developing and nurturing students' independence part of our school's mission? Oh, don't try to lean on fancy words to intimidate me. Besides, using this place like a boarding house isn't going to nurture your independence. This place is practically a dream house. With food always magically being served to you, practically sparkling clean and a bath always full of warm water. Staying here will just spoil you. Ujine. That hardly seems appropriate coming from a teacher. Besides, students who live far away are the only ones who typically live in boarding houses. Your house, while it's further than here, is still close enough to commute. Even Sakura commutes from your side of the neighborhood. So there's no need for you to stay here, boarding house or not. Well, you see, my house is currently undergoing a major renovation. It's an old building, so a lot of places are practically falling apart. I was thinking of staying in a hotel until renovations were finished, but I ran into Emiya, told him about my situation. He mentioned it would be a waste of money and offered to let me stay here. Goodness, that is a peak lie. Well, that does sound like something Shiro would say. Yes, I was surprised by his offer since I hardly know him. But living in a house would really living in a hotel really wouldn't be a waste of money. And that would be especially unstudent like of me. So I thought it would be more beneficial and educational for me to stay at Emiya's house instead. Mm. Fujine groans. So Sokka's answer and mannerisms are textbook. There's no room for Fujine, a teacher that she is, to object. Uh, I understand now, but there's still one issue. You and Shiro are the opposite sex. I still don't love the idea of you two staying under the same roof. And what are you concerned about, Miss Fujimura? Well, you know, you're pretty and Shiro's a guy, so I wanted anything inappropriate to happen, even though I know Shiro gets no hoes. That should not be an issue. My room is on the far side of the outbuilding, while Emiya's room is in a Japanese-style room near the shed. Our rooms are about 20 meters away, and at that distance, re couldn't really, uh, and that distance shouldn't really create any issues. Uh, well, the, the outbuilding does lock from the inside, and it's like a separate house. You see? Or do you not trust Emiya? You mentioned your Shiro's instructor. That would mean you know him better than I do. If you say he's the type of character who might do something like that, I may need to reconsider staying here. Don't be silly! Shiro is an upright gentleman. He would never make a girl cry. Then there's nothing to worry about. I believe I can stay here without needing to worry because I trust Emiya too. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Maybe I should play the original fate, you know? Maybe I should play the original fate. We can see everything that went down. Mmm. Ujine starts losing steam. Check and mate, Tosaka. There are a few things Fujine could have responded to, but I'm sure Tosaka would have had no trouble talking her way out of them. 
Anyway, it looks like Sosaki has officially gained citizenship in this house. Flippin' W. And then breakfast ends. As expected, Fujine gave up after Tosaka talked her down. In the end, we agreed to keep our living arrangements a secret at school while Fujine was supervised us at home. With that decided, Fujine got really excited knowing that there were going to be more people in the house, so she left for school in a good mood. So sweet. After breakfast ended, I called out to Saber before I leave for school. Saber, calm as always, says, Follow Ren's directions at school. And please, seek me out if you are ever in danger. This is how I will know my master is in a dire situation. She returns to her room. It's time to go to school. Then let us get going. Then let's get going. I don't know the area very well, so maybe you can show me some shortcuts to school. Rento Saka's in a school uniform standing next to me. Fit it up, by the way. My image of her as an honor student is fading, but she still makes me nervous when I see her in uniform. Just going to school with the prettiest girl is uh nerve-wracking enough, but on top of that. Senpai, Senpai I finished locking up the house. Sakura is coming with me too. Sakura typically goes to school with Fujine because she's a member of the Kyoto Club. But this morning she stayed put in the living room, helped clean up after breakfast, and waited for me to go to school. Huh? D did you give Sakura a key to your house, Shiro? I did. Sakura's never done anything bad, and she's all, she's been a big help to me all this time. So with that in mind, I so with all that in mind, I can't give you a spare key, but that won't bother you, right? Yeah, I don't mind, but what that's supposed to mean? You do bad stuff. You probably don't even need a key. I'm not foolish enough to make something so unnecessary. Oh, is that so? Fine, you're right. I won't need something like that anyway. I'll just kick your door down. So Sokka turns her head, huffing. Maybe I'm just getting used to her, but I'm starting to find these mannerisms of hers fascinating. Uh, what's wrong, Sakura? If you're done locking up, let's go. We got to Osaka this morning, too, so I want to get to school as early as possible. Yes, you're right. We should go if you insist. Sakura's reply was pretty unenthusiastic as she trails behind us. This isn't good. Sakura has seemed to seem Sakura has seemed down ever since Tosaka convinced Fujine to back off. Let me fix my posture. Ew. It's so uncomfortable right now. Sakura has seemed down ever since Tosaka convinced Fujine to back off. Fujine might have consented, but I have a feeling Sakura isn't convinced. I probably need to talk to her. Yeah, I should find a way to give these two the time to make up, get along and be friends. The slope road is packed with students. It's half past seven, which is the busiest time for students getting to school. Among the flock of students, I stand out and I can feel everyone stare since I'm in a pretty famous company. Maybe she forgot something? But Tosaka's been quiet the entire time. What's wrong, Tosaka? You've been acting weird ever since we reached the hill. Huh? Am I acting odd this morning? No, you're not odd, but your behavior is. Senpai, that is contradictory. I do not believe that's what Miss Tosaka was asking. Huh? Then what was she asking? Everyone is staring at Miss Tosaka, so she was worried that there was there was something wrong with her appearance. Isn't that right? Yeah. Do I look weird to you too, Sakura? It's weird. I may have been sleepy this morning, but I still blow dried my hair. I don't think there's a single wrinkle in my uniform. Maybe I have bags under my eyes because I slept in a new unfamiliar place last night. What are you yelling at me for? 
It's not my fault if you couldn't sleep. Even if that's why you got bags under your eyes, no big deal. Just forget about it. How dare you? Girls care about their appearance from the moment they're born. What? Uh, I've always tried so hard to look perfect, at least on the outside. But I guess my streak ends today. I'm so hot! Again, why are you yelling at me? I don't know what's going on here, Tosaka, but it's definitely not my fault. Take your frustrations out on Sakura. Please do not worry, Miss Tosaka. You're as beautiful today as always. Everyone's staring at you because you're with us, since you've never come to school with anyone before. Huh? So that's why I'm being treated like this. I'm not insulted, but I thought I'd figure out how school works after 10 years. I guess there's still some mysteries left at school for me. Tosaka ponders this seriously. Hold on, what kind of person ignores someone telling them they're as beautiful as always? You could have said thank you. You really don't get it, do you? Of course people will notice if you come to school with someone, especially if that person is a guy. Exactly. Miss Tosaka really doesn't care about that kind of thing. That's why there was never any romantic rumors about her. That's good to know. That means there's only been one victim who's been taken in by her appearance and suffered the consequences. I whisper that part to Sakura as we walk a bit behind so Sakura who still looks puzzled. Talking about, oh, her brother. We walk through the school gate, stairs following us the whole way. I only need to endure the stairs a little longer, since we'll all be separated once we get into the school building. Mm. I'm really not up to seeing the source of my headache first thing in the morning. So Sokka mutters to herself as we head toward the campus, talking about Shinji. Following Tosaka's gaze, I see a familiar face pushing his way through the crowd of students. Shinji's just getting hoed, bruh. Hoed and hoed. Sakura! Sakura! Oh, it's my brother. Sakura shivers at the sight of him. Shinji acts like he doesn't see us. Instead, he makes a beeline for Sakura and says, Why didn't you come to the dojo? Who do you think you are taking a day off without telling me? Shinji raises his hand. Instinctively, I put my fist in his mouth and knock his teeth out. What you raising your hand at your sister for? Come on now. Yo, Shinji. Working hard first thing in the morning, huh? Trying to get on that Chris Breezy grind, I see. I grab his hand and greet him. Uh, Emiya? You. So you were at Emiya's house against Sakura. Yes, I want to help, senpai, but that's... That's your duty as his junior to do that? That's bull crap. You have no responsibility to help a guy who hurt himself. Your job is to listen to me. Shinji huffs as he lowers his hand. I have no reason to hold on to his hand if he's not going to hit Sakura, so I let go. Do you take some kind of sick pleasure in getting in our way, Emiya? Sakura's a member of the Kyoto Club, so stop forcing her to do crap for you that makes her skip practice, okay? I don't have a response to that, but Sakura looks like she's about to kill the guy. Having Sakura come to my place to make breakfast does hold her up in the morning. That's not true. I help Senpai out because I want to. I think you're going a bit too far, brother. <laughs> too far? That's my line, Sakura. So what if Emiya lives alone? If he says he's fine alone, then you can just leave him be. I bet Emiya's more relaxed that way anyway. That's a terrible thing to say. Fine. But no more going to Emiya's house from now on. You didn't come to practice today even though I told you to, so you should be ready for some punishment. Sakura gaps and freezes. Shinji tries to grab Sakura and pull her away, but the instant he does... Morning, Mato. I thought I'd listen and not get involved, but that's quite the conversation you're having. Uh, tell Sakura. Why are you with Sakura? Shouldn't be that big of a surprise. 
Sakura is Emiya's friend, and I'm an acquaintance of Emiya. That's why the three of us walked to school together this morning. Did you not notice? You know Emiya? Man, just kill him already! That's right. As a matter of fact, we're good friends to... We're good friends... Huh? Oh, I can't read. I can't read. That's right. As a matter of fact, we're good enough friends that we might keep going home. Keep going home and coming to school together. Which is why I'm considering being friends with Sakura too. With Emiya. Shinji glares at me, bro. It's jealous. It might be my imagination, but I feel a murderous intent from him that goes way beyond just animosity. While I haven't been doing my really been while I haven't really been getting along with Shinji lately, I don't remember doing anything that would make him resent me anywhere near this much. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. This is a bad joke, Tosaka. There's no way you would hang around a guy like Emiya. Oh, I know. You probably got it all wrong. Yeah, sure, I was friends with Emiya before, but we're not anymore. Emiya and I are long since done being friends, so I don't gain anything by being- You don't gain anything by being friendly with him. Is that so? Well, that's a relief, since I never had the slightest interest in you. Woo! Lay it on him! Whoa. I feel bad for Shane. Don't feel bad for him! If I were in his shoes, I would have killed myself. I probably wouldn't have recovered for a good while. Why you? Oh, and by the way, Mato, about your conversation earlier, I thought morning practices for the Kyudo Club were voluntary. I've never heard that you needed permission to be absent. I'm sure this would be news to Miss Fujimura and Ayako as well. Sh shut up! It's none of your business what an older brother tells his little sister. Don't poke your nose in our family affairs. Yo! Peace out! Oh, I completely agree. And that's why you shouldn't have anything to say about Emiya's home either. Honestly, you've got some nerve. Causing a scene like this so early in the day, Mato. Shinji retreats a step, still glaring at Sakura and me in the process. Fine. I forgive you for this morning, but you won't get a second chance, Sakura. If something like this happens again, I'll put you in your place once and for all. We're going to have to put you in a grave once and for all. I'm sick of you. Shinji heads towards the school building after making a big pr 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 pronoun pr pronouncement. He's turned tail and run after Tosaka gave him such a dressing down. I'm sorry, my brother was so rude to you. Sakura's apologizing not just to me, but to Tosaka as well. Don't worry about it. It was actually a nice way to start the day. The gears in my head are oiled up and turning at full speed now. I love a good argument, you know? She's just like me. And I should be the one apologizing. I might have gone a bit too far. He still has a reputation to think about, and I shouldn't have said anything like that in front of everyone at school, you know? No! 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 You should have said worse. If Mato gets all X all down from this, go ahead and cheer him up. And tell him he can spar with me anytime he likes. Yes. If brother hasn't learned anything from this incident, then please spar with him again, Mr. Osaka. Relieved, Sakura smiles cheerfully. Sasaka seems suddenly bashful and looks away. When are we going to kill Mato? And you too, Senpai. Try not to get mad at him either. That's too late. I'm already ready to, like, shove dynamite down his throat. And you too. Try not to get mad at him either. Your brother's only friend. I know, it's probably impossible for me not to get mad. But I've known Shinji's like that since forever. I can see us getting close again at some point, but I'll take baby steps with her. Yes, I look forward to seeing that happen. Sakura quickly bows. Yeah, the only thing I the only thing I get really mad at Shinji about is the way he treats his sister like crap. Y'all are a little too tolerant of this though. He deserves to be shot. Let's have another good day. 
Sakura has her first year floor. So Sakura and I climb the stairs to the second year floor. Oh, it's freaking Issei! And run right into the suit at council president. Ooh. Why are you with Tosaka, Shiro and Mia? Oh, good morning, Ryudo. What kind of greeting is... Whoa! I woke up feeling like something was off this morning, but I never thought it could be this dire. Just come over here, Emiya. Staying so close to Tosaka might poison you. Issei tugs me on my arm. Hard. Tosaka looks at Issei and me without a word, then walks towards Class 2A, as if nothing happened. Go right on ahead. Nobody's stopping you. Tosaka silently passes by, but then... Shiro, rooftop, lunch. She whispers that to me so Issei won't hear. Issei heard anyways. Uh, I'm a little tired, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick little break. You know, maybe just pause the... I don't know why I already paused while I was talking. Just pause the recording right quick, maybe charge my controller, and then I'm gonna get back on it. I just need a little rest. And they say, Daddy's home. Uh, uh, uh. I got my little break. It's lunchtime. After seeing Tosaka and me in the morning, Issei hasn't been speaking to me. He's treating me like a traitor. I guess I went too far. I feel just a bit of regret. Issei interrogated me about why I was with Tosaka this morning and my response was, We got close over weekend. That was not a great idea. I expected Issei's next set of questions to be about how why, how and why we got close, but before I could explain further, Issei staggered away. Well, I guess that works to my advantage since I need to do things alone for a while. Having fewer people involved with having fewer people involved will make things easier. Anyway, the first thing I need to do is I mean, I assume we're gonna meet Tosaka regardless, so first I don't need to say. I assume we're going to meet Tosaka regardless, so first things first, I'll explain everything to Sakura. She needs to know. Alright. It was hectic this morning, and I couldn't properly explain myself then, so I should go talk to Sakura now. I head up to the fourth floor, to the first year classrooms. I peek into a classroom from the hallway, and Sakura notices me right away. Oh, is something the matter? Sakura steps into the hallway and tilts her head in confusion. I thought she would have been depressed after what happened with Shinji this morning, but she seems fine. Nothing really happened, but I, I just came over to ask you to forgive me about what happened with Tosaka. I couldn't talk to you about it this morning, so I wanted to apologize before I went home. Oh, what about Miss Tosaka should I forgive you for? Well, about the thing where she's going to be staying with me for a while. I should have consulted you first, Sakura. But instead, I decided on my own. I'm sorry. But there's a legitimate reason for Tosaka staying over, and it's nothing shameful. You might not forgive me for it, but I, I just wanted to tell you that. I lower my head apologetically. Please, do not say that, Senpai. There's no reason for you to apologize. I was certainly surprised when I learned Miss Tosaka was going to be staying over, but Miss Fujimura approved the arrangement, so I don't see any problem. You are you are the master of your own home, so you can do as you wish with it. It's not my place to say anything about it. You dummy. What the hell do you think you're talking about, Sakura? That house is mine, Fujine's, and yours. I shouldn't just decide things on my own. That's why I need to apologize. Rather than be mad at Tosaka, you should be mad at me. Because, well, I'm, I'm the one who invited her over without consulting with my family first. And if you don't want Tosaka to stay over, I'll call it off. I know it's not enough to earn your forgiveness, but I can't continue to do something you don't like. This isn't just me trying to smooth things over. I'm speaking from the heart. Teaming up with Tosaka doesn't mean she needs to live with me. There should be other ways to work effectively with her. 
then I'll forgive you. I'll allow Miss Tosaka to stay over, and I'll also forgive you for being so selfish. Is that what you want? Are you, are you sure? Yes. I won't even ask about the circumstances. I'm satisfied just hearing you say that. Sakura looks at me smiling warmly. What a sweetheart. She's not pretending. Sakura is giving her honest approval of Tosaka staying with me. Thanks, Sakura. I'm really glad. Well, I'm the one who's glad. Oh, but may I ask you something? If I told you I didn't want Miss Tosaka to stay, what would you have done? Oh, well, if you'd done that, I'm, I might have gone to her instead. Because I actually do need to be with Tosaka for a while. You'd go to her instead? Yeah, instead of Tosaka staying here, I probably would have stayed at Tosaka's place. That way I wouldn't need to bother you or Fujine about our arrangements. Shiro, you idiot! The thought of staying at the home of a girl I admire, rather admired, would be terrifying, but I would have no other choice. Well, I appreciate it. If that had happened, I think she would tease me even more than she does right now. That's a relief. I'm so glad Sakura forget me. Hey, wait. Sakura, what's wrong? You look pale. I call out to her asking if she's all right. Sakura seems to be lost in thought. I'm so glad I didn't say that. Sakura sighs deeply for some reason. You wasted all of luck. I'm sorry guys, I didn't want him to do that. I thought he was gonna go to Tosaka after talking to Sakura. We got we got to see we got to see that little um exchange with Sakura, so let's go in and see Tosaka. There's there's no freaking way at all. It took him all of lunch for that one conversation with Sakura, bro. I I didn't bro, I genuinely thought like he was gonna see Tosaka after that. But he didn't. Fucking dumbass. I promised to meet Tosaka. It may have been her dictating me, but she probably has something to talk about. I'm gonna have to be more careful with my decisions, man. I can't assume. I, I gotta. I gotta stop assuming Shiro was gonna have common sense. I buy lunch and head to the rooftop. The rooftop is typically packed with other students when it's warmer, but it's deserted in the winter chill. Although winter in Fuyuki is comparably warmer, comparatively warmer, the rooftop gets unbearably cold. The only people exposed to the cold wind are myself and. You're late. What was the hold up? Tosaka shivering in the shadows. Sorry, I'm late. I felt bad, so I brought you something to make up for it. But I guess you don't need it. I show her the warm canned coffee I brought and put it back in my pocket. Uh, you may look unsophisticated, but you're pretty considerate. I did it because I felt like it. And come on, go a little further over there. It's windier over here and people might see us. I handed the canned coffee and I, as I head toward the back where I won't be seen. We won't be conspicuous here and there's no way anyone from the fourth floor would see us. Back up, bitch! Thanks, next time I prefer tea and I like instant milk tea. Other than that, you'll get no thanks from me, so be warned. Alright, I'm not getting you shit. Got it, if I remember next time that is. So why'd you call me here? Considering we're meeting where nobody else is around, I assume you want to talk about you know what. Of course, what else would we talk about other than that? She wanted to bring backs. Yeah, you're right. So what's up? Why are you acting so nonchalant? I mean, it's cold. I want you to make this short. I'm freezing my fucking balls off right now. They're literally, my testicles are solid right now. Aren't you cold too? What? Of course I am. I was planning on getting this over with real quick too. Then talk, bitch! Damn! Yeah, I figured. I was just stating the obvious, so she really doesn't need to yell at me like that. Well, fine. Then I'll get right to the point. 
Shira, what were you thinking of doing after school? After school? I don't really have any plans, honestly. If I need to help out the student council, I'll help. But if not, I'll go to my part-time job. F f fu uh. f fuck you, controller. I gave you all that time to charge up and you gonna die on me. Something that happened, I, I wasn't getting any more audio. I had to fix it right quick. While I was fixing it, my freaking... My, my recording software just closed by itself. I was annoying. Okay, let's get to it. What even happened? I don't remember. Yep, I figured. I was, yep, I figured. I was just stating the obvious, so surely doesn't need to yell at me like that. Well, fine. Then I'll get right to the point. Sh oh, okay, I remember, I remember. Why are you looking so confused? If you have something to say, just tell me. I'll try to address it. Honestly, I may not care what really happens to you, but I guess I'll give you a warning. We have formed an alliance, and you're just too inexperienced as a mage. Why are you so fucking close to me? You want to kiss or some shit? I mean, I'll do it. If you want to. Say the word. That again. I'm sick of hearing how inexperienced of a mage I am. I'm actually sensitive about that, so don't bully me. I'm not bullying you. I just want to point out how ignorant you are because you don't seem to notice there's a bounded field set up around the school. The fuck? A bounded field at the school? Hold on. A bounded field at the school, does that mean... You got it. It's a bounded field set up by some other master. It's been cast over a wide area, and if it gets activated, it'll pretty much enclose the entire school grounds. It's intended to steal the flesh and blood of all the people within the bounded field. It looks like it's still in its beginning stages, but haven't you noticed how listless everyone seems? Now that she mentioned it, I felt a little strange two days ago. But was that why? But that means... That means there's a master at school? Exactly. We have an enemy lurking here. Do you get it now, Emiya? If you're not prepared, you'll die. My relaxed demeanor fades as I tense up. Do you know who this master is, Tosaka? No, I have some ideas, but I don't have solid proof. Well, I actually do know there's another mage at this school, but a mage isn't necessarily a master. There are cases where amateurs become masters like you, so I can't be sure. Uh, I'm still a mage and not a complete amateur and- Hey, hold up! You said there's another mage at this school? Yep, but I don't sense any indignation that they're a master. I checked right away, but they didn't have any command spells and I didn't sense the presence of a servant. If they're hiding it really well, that's another matter, but I'm pretty sure they're not a master. Which is why I think I'm, I think the master here is someone who knows only a little bit of magecraft like you. I've been feeling a bit of magical energy other than ours here recently. That has to be the enemy master, but... But it's not enough to track. A master who's not a mage, huh? You must be very sure if you're bringing it up. I believe you, but I didn't know there were so many mages in our school. It's actually not that many. It's just me and that other mage. You know how mages value their lineage, right? If two families put down roots in a small town, town like this area, they couldn't help knowing each other. Is that what happens? But I didn't know anything about your family. Your household is an exception. Your father had to have alienated himself from the association and had been some sort of lone wolf. He probably settled here just because he liked it. But this city is under the Tosaka family's jurisdiction. If we had found out, we would have taken everything from him. So I guess he was hiding to avoid exactly that. Hey, what the heck do you mean about taking everything from him? Curious? I'll come and collect from you once you're properly trained, so come so look forward to it. 
Jeez, what a facade you put up. Some honest student you are, you an imposter. Oh, is there something wrong with that? Maintaining appearances is part of a major's job description. Because, you know, I'm the Tosaka family's heir. I have to act like the perfect honor student or I wouldn't be able to face my father in heaven. Your father is not in fucking heaven! Sorry. Your father? He died when I was young. Well, he lived a longer fulfilling life, so I'm not really that sad about it. Osaka smiles and saying that's just how it goes when you have a mage for a father. But that's a lie. You're sad when someone dies. All the more of that person is your parent. Saying that it can't be helped. Saying it can't be helped because someone is a mage is no excuse to just gloss over it. Well, you're right. I can't really argue that. You're absolutely right. As she says that, Tosaka opens up the canned coffee she'd been using as, as a hand warmer until now. She drinks her coffee in small sips. I'd expect her to take a big gulp, honestly, but she's pretty feminine when it comes to things like this. Back on topic, there are only two majors in Fuyuki. The other masters are either from outside or they are regulars who are chosen to be masters because they just know a little magecraft. Is that so? According to Tosaka, I'm quite the irregularity. I can't tell. But if there's a master who barely started learning magecraft, they probably wouldn't be able to create a bounded field like this one. It may not be the master. The servant might have put up the bounded field. Is it caster? Servants can't choose their masters. If a servant ends up with a master like you, their only chance at winning would be to come up with the strategies themselves. Probably. I hate to think of it that way, but I can't argue. Good, I like it when you're so accepting. So, about this bounded field, it's quite advanced. It's pretty much at the level of magic. It's pretty much at the level of, It's pretty much at the level of magic. And if there were a mage here who could create something like this, they wouldn't be able to conceal their presence or magical energy. I believe this bounded field is the work of a servant. The work of a servant, huh? That must mean the master isn't as dangerous. That's not necessarily true. Not that the mages are not, whoever it is, they don't know the proper rules. They're almost certainly the type to immediately try to kill any master they find. Huh, not know the rules? The rules of the Holy Grail War? No, the rules of just being a human. If they're making their servant create a bounded field like this, they just flat out don't know right from wrong. Listen, Shiro. Once this bounded field is completed and activated, it'll dissolve and absorb everyone inside. Think of it like they're in the belly of some creature. Or rather, we might not be affected by it because we're protecting ourselves with magical energy. But anybody who doesn't possess magical energy will weaken and die without their knowing. This is way beyond just involving ordinary citizens. The moment this bounded field is activated, everyone in this school will die. Do you understand? There's a master in the school who's willing to make a bounded field this awful. My vision blurs momentarily. I take a deep breath, deep breath, so I can make sure I fully comprehend what Tosaka's trying to say. But it stops right there. I attempt to imagine the worst possible outcome. Even if my imaginings may fall short, and I keep that image deep within my heart and accept the position I've been placed in. I get what you're trying to say. So Tosaka, can't we try to destroy this bounded field? I tried, but it was impossible. I found all the sources for it, but I can't destroy them. The only thing I can do is temporarily weaken the sources to delay the whole thing from activating. So as long as you're here, the bounded field cannot be, can't be fully formed. I can only hope, but that's wishful thinking. The bounded field is already set up and magical energy and the magical energy needed to activate is gradually accumulating. According to Archer's estimate, everything will be ready in about eight days. 
When it's ready, either the master or servant will transform the school into a living hell. And before that happens, we need to defeat the master lurking in the school. But it'll be challenging to find them. We've pretty much been at their mercy from the moment that bounded field was formed. The master just needs to wait until it's ready to activate. They don't need to make themselves known until then. So the only chance we have is when they come out, right? Bingo. So you should stay quiet until then. You'll have to fight whether you like it or not when the time comes. And it'd be stupid to let the enemy find you. Were you to go searching for the master yourself? The metallic sound of the school's bell rings out across the frozen rooftop. Lunchtime is over. That's all I've got to talk. That's all I've got right now. I have somewhere I need to go today, so go home by yourself. Try not to take any detours. So Sokka leaves with a casual bye. This doesn't feel right to me. Learning that masters may attack other masters is enough to make me anxious, but... A bounded field around a school? But now there's a possibility that innocent people might get dragged into this too. That's not what masters do. That's just what a mass murderer does. I need to find who set this bounded field up before it's activated. Find them and destroy them other utterly. Rejoice, Shiro Emiya. Your wish shall... I shake my head trying to ignore the words that pop right into my mind. I never wish for this. Wishing for bad guys to show up so I can defeat them is not what I want to do. The end of the, the end of day homeroom ends and students start to file out their classrooms. Normally I would go to the student council room, but I decided to go home since, Ota since Osaka told me to. You do what she says. The gate is still locked. Oh, right. It's been a while since I came home this early. I usually help out doing odd jobs and go to a part-time job, so it's rare for me to come straight home from school. I usually find the gate unlocked and Sakura preparing dinner inside. I've gotten so used to that after a year, I forgot how important coming home early can be. Even the simple act of opening a locked gate makes me realize how thankful I should be for Sakura coming here. I'm home! I step into the hallway as I call out. The moment I enter the living room, I see the blonde girl. You are back. For a split second, I see Saber. As I see Saber, I feel like I've been hurled into a dream of some sort of fantasy. Shiro, did you just get home? She calls my name in a quiet voice. I finally come back to reality. Oh, Saber, sorry, you surprised me. Popping up so suddenly like that. Oh, got lost in dreams. Just for an instant, I mistook her for a normal girl rather than Saber. Oh, your orders were to, your orders were for me to stay here. Was I mistaken? No, no, I just got confused. Don't worry about it. But how are you feeling, Saber? You said you were going to sleep a lot, so does that mean now you're... There's no problem with me being awake now. Well, it would be ideal for me to sleep except when fighting, but that would leave me rusty. I should move around periodically or my body will not properly will not be properly responsive when I most need it. Got it. You have a point there. You get a headache if you sleep all day and I'm sure you're not sleeping because you're sleeping. Yes, that's true. I do not sleep because I get fatigued. But Shiro, did you say you get a headache when you sleep too much? Don't you? People don't typically do well if they sleep a good chunk of the day. In my case, I'll get woken up by a headache, so I can't sleep for more than half a day. How strange. That never happened to me. I've always been able to sleep as much as I like, both now and in the past. That doesn't sound particularly efficient, Saber. Sleeping all day would be a waste. Wouldn't it be more fun to wake up and play if you weren't sleeping? You may be right. You waste less time that way. Right? 
You may have been forced to do this because you're with me, but once your contract with me ends, you should go back to your normal lifestyle and cycle. It may not be my place to say, but if this becomes a habit and you sleep all day, people might start thinking you're lazy. It may in fact be it may in fact be too late. Some may already see me that way. She thinks about it and furrows her brow. I thought it was just idle chit chat, but Sebi doesn't really seem to get jokes. We move to the living room. Seba looks like she wants to know what happened today, so I decided to tell her about the bounded field at school Tosaka warned me about. I see. That master must be planning to use the people inside the school as a sacrifice. To be blunt, probably, yeah. Tosaka says she needs more time, though. I agree. Creating a bounded field that large should take a considerable amount of time. It is possible to enclose a school building, so it was most likely chosen to function in a manner similar to a temple altar. I believe it would take at least 10 days to fully activate a bounded field of that scale. 10 days. I felt something strange two days ago on Saturday, so that means we still have about eight more days. That lines up with Tosaka's estimate. Yes. Whether that bounded field is meant to gather sacrifices or is intended to solidify the opponent's defenses, both will pose a problem for us if we permit its completion. We will need to find the master who created this bounded field before that happens. Yeah. Tosaka so said it would be challenging, but it should be easy to identify someone if they're lurking in the school. We need to do everything we can to find them and make them stop the bounded field. The chances of them being someone from school are pretty, pretty high, considering when they set up their bounded field, a student or teacher. Starting tomorrow, I'll search the school as thoroughly as I can during lunch and try to find anyone suspicious. Other than that, we'll need to figure out what kind of servant they have with them. Then again, we'll only learn that once we found them. Then the only thing I can think of right now is to I think about the servants I've encountered already. Saber's awake, so now's my chance to ask her about them. Okay then. I mean, I don't think it really... Will it really matter who I choose? No, it doesn't seem like it. We know about Lancer, we know about Berserker. We don't know anything about... Well, she probably doesn't know anything about Archer. Let's talk about Berserker, because he's the main focus. That giant. I should ask about the servant that overwhelmed Saber. Berserker. According to Saber and Tosaka, he's likely the strongest servant, if only in battle. Saber, what would happen if you fought against Berserker again? Would you not be able to win with me as your master? I'm Saber's greatest weakness. So I asked whether she's unable to demonstrate her full potential because she's formed a contract with me. That is not the case, Shiro. Even if we, even if you were a prepared and experienced master, that would not alter the fact that Berserker is an extremely powerful foe. You need not blame your own immaturity as a master in this matter. That may be true, but it doesn't change the fact you have a lot of limitations placed on you. So let's say you were at your full potential. No, even 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 where I had my full potential, I was still fuck. Even where I had my fuck. Even where I fuck. Even where I at my full potential, it would still be difficult to be, to defeat Berserker, or rather, it is likely impossible for any servant to corner that giant. Shiro, do you remember that battle last night? Berserker easily deflected Ma Rin's Magecraft attack. However, he does not have magic resistance like I do. He simply nullified Rin's Magecraft with his own brute strength. That is bullshit. What? I did see that, but is that surprising? That just means Berserker's body is tough, right? He's tough. No, that is not right. Berserker did not endure Rin's Magecraft. He simply repelled it. 
there is a significant difference. If he had endured the attack, that would mean his armor would eventually break up a single spot where attacked repeatedly. Repelling it is another matter entirely. That means Ren's Magecraft never reached Berserker to begin with. Didn't reach? Does that mean he nullified Magecraft like you do? Yes. But as I mentioned earlier, Berserker doesn't possess magic resistance. That can only mean his noble phantasm was what repelled the magecraft. I can only speculate, but Berserker's noble phantasm may be his armor. And it may not be just any armor, but close to a theoretical magecraft called Conceptual Weapon. Berserker lightly possesses an ability to nullify all types of attacks that are below a certain threshold. That may be why my sword and Ren's magecraft didn't get through. The Berserker is indeed a hero from Greece. Indeed the hero from Greece. His abilities are likely to be a rank A. If we want to injure him, we will likely have to use an attack that is at least at the same level as him. An attack of the same rank, does that mean... Yes, I hesitate to say this, but it is likely he would nullify any attack whether it be a normal attack or a noble phantasm below rank A. If we mean to defeat that giant, we will need, an enorm we will need a normal attack that is at least rank A, as well as a noble phantasm that exceeds that level. I close my eyes and remember Saber's abilities. Saber's strength, her normal attacks are rank B, and the Noble Phantasm is rank C. Unbelievable. If what Saber's saying is true, there's no way we can even hurt Berserker, let alone defeat him. Wait a minute. Aren't the standards for strength and Noble Phantasms measured differently? Even if their ranks are low, aren't Noble Phantasms powerful weapons? If, if you converted strength, wouldn't it at least be rank A? Yes, Noble Phantasms are not comparable to normal attacks. A Noble Phantasm is rank, of rank C is equivalent to a, an A rank or A plus rank in normal abilities. But the logic that protects Berserker operates beyond the scope of reality. Even if a Noble Phantasm is strong enough to destroy the world, if it is below rank A, the idea, the idea is that it will still be nullified. Then the next time we're attacked, we'll be our last, we'll die. No, no matter who the heroic spirit is, they will always have a weakness. At the very least, Berserker does not possess an attack that is anti-fortress level. We should be able to avoid being wiped out by a single attack. Even though I should have got wiped out by a single attack. Once my wounds are completely healed, I should be able to fight more evenly in a one-on-one -on -one match against him. You should be able to retreat during that time, or I might be able to fight an opportunity to win if I have some sort of backup. So ultimately, retreating is what I have to do, huh? Until then, we need to find out Berserker's weakness. So Saber, what is an anti-fortress attack? It is a type of pow attack power and range of a Noble Phantasm. Anti-personnel Noble Phantasms shine in single combat. Anti-army Noble Phantasms wreak havoc on entire groups of enemies. And anti-fortress Noble Phantasms wipe out, wipe out massive areas in a single blow. Noble Phantasms largely fall into three, these three categories. I see. Anti-armor, anti-fortress attacks just from their name sound like giant missiles. They'd wipe out Tosaki and me in an instant. Luckily, Berserker doesn't have any attacks like that. But that is where the Master comes in to compensate. Iligusville has a tremendous amount of magical energy. She is a skilled mage, and we're Berserker concentrating on protecting her. And we're Berserker concentrating on protecting her, I would most likely be unable to protect you. I see. Berserker isn't our only concern. Master and Servant are one. I am Saber's weakness in that regard, too. So about the other servants. Please wait, Shiro. Someone has entered the gate of this property. What, you can sense something like that? Crap, it's already late. This is bad. Sakura must be back. 
The doorbell rings from the front entrance. I hear Sakura's voice. I'm coming in. Saber, sorry, but... Yes, I know. I'll retire to my room, so please do not mind me. Saber goes back to her room. Almost as if switching with Saber. I'm home. Good, good. You came home early like I asked you to. So Sokka walks in, laden with shopping bags. Thank you for having me again, senpai. It's rare for you to be home so early. Sakura walks in, smiling happily. Okay, everything is ready. I'm gonna get started. So Sokka psychs herself up and heads to the kitchen. Senpai, um, about dinner tonight. You don't have to worry about it since it's Tosaka's turn today. You prepared breakfast for us, so leave dinner to us. She and I will hand her dinner while Tosaka's staying here. Oh, very well. If you say so, then I'll have to oblige. Sakura quietly sits down. I hear a fiery, boisterous sound coming from the kitchen, but I see nothing of Tosaka. I guess I can trust her. I should stay in my room until dinner's ready, considering Saber's waiting there. I'm gonna go rest in my room. If Fujine comes, tell her she should prepare a bath for herself and for a change. She should prepare the bath herself for a change. Okay, please, go relax. I'll come and get you once dinner is ready. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't forget to knock when you come into my room. It's a little before 6 o'clock. I figured dinner should be ready around 7. I return to my room and find Saber sleeping in the room next door. Bummer. Thought I could talk to her a little more. I click my tongue with disappointment and sit down. Wait a minute, what am I thinking? There's nothing else I could talk to her about apart from the Holy Grail War. Besides, I don't know how to act around Saber. Oh well. If she's asleep, I'll just let her rest. I mutter to myself and stare at the hands of the clock. Last night, Saber, Tosaka, and I ate dinner. But today, Sakura and Fujine are in the mix as well, making it five people. Oh, well, actually, Saber can't join. As long as Fujine and Sakura are around, I can't have Saber come out of her room. I wonder if Saber ate breakfast. Last night, Saber was nodding while eating her dinner. Based on her behavior, it's not like she doesn't need food. I didn't prepare lunch for her, so she must be hungry. Once Fujine and Sakura go home, I should warm some dinner for Saber. She'll have to eat alone, but there's nothing we can do about that. It's just... Imagining Saber eating by herself is making me mad. He's such a sweetheart. My goodness. Huh? Shira, are you awake? So Sokka knocks on my door and peeks her head in. Tosaka, what's wrong? Nothing. Dinner's ready, so come on out. It's already that time. I pick myself up and glance towards Saber's room and head into the hallway. My goodness! Oh, there you are! Look at all the dishes! Can you believe it? Tosaka can cook Chinese cuisine! Something that has long been absent from our menu! Fujine dances excitedly around the table which is laid out for dinner. Now that she mentions it, it does look all it does look it does all look to be Chinese dishes today. Four big plates decorate the table. Crab meat with egg omelet. Shredded beef with green peppers and vegetable stir fry with some fancy meat I've never seen before. For some reason, a plate full of steamed shumai. Salad has been served on individual plates for everyone, and the setup seems to have been well thought out. It's pretty extravagant. Fujine loves it. Surprise. I thought you would make something Western. Oh, she did consider making Western dishes. But when I mentioned that no one, in the, no one in this house makes Chinese dishes, she volunteered to make some. How would she set out to do something no one else does? Uh, hey, Sakura. You and Tosaka came home at the same time. Did you two go shopping together or something? 
Yes, Mr. Saka waited for me until Kyudo Club's practice ended and we decided to shop for groceries on our way home. I had no idea. Looks like you two are closer than I thought. That may be true. Mr. Saka speaks to me often at school too. I don't know what made her take a liking to me, but she's always been very kind to me ever since I came to this school. Huh? So Tosaka really is a nice upperclassman. Enough yapping! Let's eat! I'm hungry! Bujine sits down excitingly. You heard her. You two sit down. Chinese food gets criminally bad when it's cold. Tosaka sits down and she tells us to do the same. I sit down without a word. Everyone bows and thanks Tosaka for cooking and starts eating. Whoa! Hold on! I hate to admit it, but this is good. I've never cooked Chinese food because I always thought it all tastes the same. But Tosaka's dish made me realize it had all been my bias. And I find myself regretting that. Wow, this is amazing. It's been a while since I've had a dish that goes so well with rice. Oh, yeah, I'm giving you full marks for this one. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to get such an honest opinion from someone like you. Yes, I also see Chinese food in a new light. I don't usually like eating spicy dishes, but this is delicious. Sakura looks pleased, seeming to enjoy the food, too. I just see in everyone's happy faces till Sakura... She turns to face me, her face triumphant. What? You look like you have something to say. Nothing. I'm just glad everyone liked it. Well, there's one person not being honest about his feelings, but it's amusing me, so I'll let it slide. I understand how bad it must feel to be beaten at something you're good at. I get it. You made me cook dinner last night because you wanted to assess my cooking. Okay, today's lesson. Never let anyone see your plans or potential. So Sokka returns to her food, looking exceedingly pleased with herself. A, a fucking meaningless competition, by the way. Dinner's a bit livelier than I expected. Sakura and Tosaka are acting like good upper and underclassmen, and Fujine is not completely on Tosaka's side. Well, I have no complaints about getting to enjoy a good meal. There's no complaints, but I feel I can't. I feel unreservedly good about sharing a meal with everyone here. I stand up. Huh? Are you going to the bathroom, Shira? Yeah. No, I just forgot something, so I'm, a, so I'm going to bring them out now, so wait. The moment I step out to the living room, I lock eyes with Tosaka, who is looking at me silently. Her eyes are saying, don't do this dumb shit. I didn't think it was right. That's why I didn't like the fact that I was making her sit alone, even though she's living with us. So without really considering the consequences of my actions, I take her hand. Sh Shiro, uh, Shiro, what are you doing? Just come with me. I'm going to introduce you to everyone. Have you lost your mind? Please wait. That's... I'm breaking you out because I am thinking straight. Come on, let's go. We can deal with whatever happens after. Wait, Shiro. I'm still dragging her along by the time we reach the living room. Sorry, Tosaka. Can you add one more plate for her? Tosaka doesn't object, but Fujine and Sakura are looking at Saber in confused astonishment. I know it's a little late, but I want to introduce you to. I want to introduce her to y'all. Her name is Saber. I'm going to be taking care of her for a while. As you can see, she's a foreigner and not used to living in Japan, so please help her with that. Damn. Damn. Hold on. I gotta... Damn. Look at that. The two don't react. It's understandable. But I can't really find it... I can't really find it in me to care right now. Come on, sit over there, Saber. It's better when you eat with everyone. It is true that it would be more efficient, but I... Don't need to be bashful. You're going to be living with us from now on, too. If we're going to live together, we should eat together, too. 
Yes, if you say so, I'll, I'll have to oblige. You can't do- <laughs> Oh! Whoa! You can't do that! My ears! My ears are ringing! When has gotten into you, Shiro? First you bring Tosaka here to stay and now her too. When did this place turn into a hotel? Alright, it's fine. This place is as big as a hotel anyway, so it's no deal to give up a room or two. If you're okay with Tosaka staying here, then Saber should be fine too. Ow. Of course not! I approve of Tosaka, but I know nothing about this complete stranger. Just who is this girl anyway? Ooh, she's a distant relative. I don't really know the details about what happened to her, but she came here looking for help from my old man. I'm not buying a ridiculous story like that. Even if it were the case, why did she come to the Emiya house? There's no way Kirisugo had acquaintances from other country. She can't say that without with any confidence that she knows it. My old man traveled constantly, so she probably had more friends from other countries than in Japan. I, I can't say that for sure, but it still sounds fishy. So you, why did you come here? Well, that... You shut, Shiro! Uh, uh, Saber, right? I'm asking you. Saber is silent. I don't blame her. Saber doesn't really have a backstory. And she's not cunning enough to go along with my lies. I highly doubt that. I do not exactly know. I was only following Kiritsugu's orders. I guess she does. Huh, so Kirisugu entrusted Shiro to you? Yes, I was told to protect Shiro from his enemies. Ever so quietly, Saber says it with such straightforwardness and clarity. There isn't room for anyone to protest. And even if it was really a lie, it will become the absolute truth in Saber's mind. Even Fujine can't argue with her. But... She stands up with a frown and glares right at Saber. Fine, if you're serious about this, I'll test your skills. Fujine drops it so on us all out of nowhere. Hold on, they're for the scrap. And with the sound of whooshing wind, Fujine takes us outside. And then she takes the bamboo sword, the Shinai, hanging on the wall and continues glaring at Saber. Okay, what the fuck is Fujine thinking? You! You said you would protect Shiro, which means you're at least somewhat disciplined, right? Are you telling me to take a sword? That's right. I'll accept this if you prove you're stronger than me. But if you're weak, I'm sending you back home. I do not mind, but I do not see the sense in this. I'm supposed to be the one to protect Shiro. I'm gonna be right by his side until he grows up to be a man. Saber doesn't seem to fully comprehend what Fujine's intentions are. <laughs> then again, none of us do. Like I said, I don't need anyone weaker than me around. If you say you're stronger than me, you should be more dependable, right? And if you are, maybe I can entrust Shiro to you just a little. Fujine swings her Shinai around with a pout. Understood. I just need to convince you, correct? That's right! But convincing me will be no easy feat! No sooner has Fujine said that than she practically leaps forward, rushing towards Saber, brandishing her Shinai. Whoa, Fujine, this is ridiculous! She goes in for a surprise attack, even though she hasn't even given Saber a Shinai yet. This tiger has no business calling herself a teacher if she's going to pull something like that. Huh? Saber stands there in a daze, taken aback by Fujine's surprise attack. Fujine swings for the body. Huh? Fujine tilts her head in confusion. Well, yeah. We're all dumbfounded, we're just watching, so it must be even stranger. Like the mystery of the hanging gardens of Babylon for Fujine since she's the one who experienced it firsthand. Saber's still standing. 
The only difference is now she's holding the Shenai Fujine had in her hand a heartbeat earlier. Uh, for real? I don't know if this is for real, but it definitely happened. Zebra isn't even holding the Shenai she took in a ready position. Fujine is frozen in her tracks right in front of Saber. Fujine is a kendo expert whose skill is supposedly unmatched. The experience probably made it clear to her that Saber is on a completely different level. If you require me to take a ready stance, I shall. But I do believe you are skilled enough to realize I have already proved my point. <laughs> No! No! You made her cry! Come on, Saber! Shame on you! Fujine staggers back and drops to her knees. The contest is over. Do you approve of me? <laughs> Fujine slumps her shoulders and droops her head low. Just when I think she's about to retreat quietly. So weird, girl took Shiro away from me! <laughs> Fujine starts to cry so loud, it starts to hurt all of our ears. Oh my goodness. Grown ass woman, by the way. In the end, it took two hours to calm Fujine down. Grown ass woman, by the way. Fujine jested to Saber saying, We need to talk, and went into my old man's room. They were in there for two hours. She finally came out looking unsatisfied and mumbled. Guess I got no choice but to acknowledge her. She only nodded in resignation. Sakura, though, was silent the whole time. It was getting late, so Fujine wound up taking Sakura home. But Sakura didn't say a word. She just bowed and went home. I'm going back to the outbuilding, then. That's all Ren said. Come to think of it, Tosaka's been quiet this whole time, too. Sorry about that. I bet you're thinking I did something stupid again. Not really. The only thing you're trying to do is add some unnecessary flap to your heart to make yourself feel better. You keep doing things like this, you're going to really get yourself in trouble. She waves goodnight and heads off to the outbuilding. I'm exhausted. I should probably sleep early today. Please wait, Shiro. I would like to ask you something. Sure, what is it? Why did you introduce me to everyone? I agree with Rin, that was unnecessary. No real rhyme or reason. I just didn't like how things were going, so I introduced you to everyone. Shiro, you did not answer my question. You must tell me what you didn't like. Saber draws closer to me. Was what happened tonight really so strange to her? The hell do I know? I was just eating, I didn't like knowing that you were all alone. If anything, I just thought we'd have less secrets to worry about once Fujine and Sakura knew about you. That was most certainly futile then. Making them aware of my presence may well be detrimental. I am able to conceal myself in this house, so it would be better for me to simply remain standing by. Better in what way? Is she saying she's better off ostracized when the rest of us are eating? That's not true. You may be fine with it, but I didn't like it. It's not about logic or sense. I look away from Saber. I'm gonna go to the shed, so go ahead to your room. She doesn't answer. I turn my back on Saber, who seems unconvinced by what I said, and make my way to the shed. I step outside. The tranquil yard is lit by pale moonlight. The winter sky is clear enough to see the stars above me. I sigh, hardly realizing I'm doing it. But Sokka's right. I'm contradicting myself. I'm heading to the shed to avoid Saber's room, but I don't want to leave Saber alone. I'm having a hard time interacting with Saber as a member of the opposite sex, but I can't ignore her on a human level. It's no wonder Tosaka gets disgusted with me and my contradictions. Shit. I thought I was only ex inexperienced in magecraft, but I'm also just generally immature too. I absentmindedly look up at the night sky. The night drags on. 
My inexperience is all the more reason I can't skip out on my training. All I can do is keep on believing that if I work hard enough, I might someday attain something. Woo! Let's see what this. Breakfast, school commute. All right. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoy. Oh, shit. Blade. What the fuck? Oh no, nah, some crazy shit's about to happen in this in this episode in, in the next episode. Yeah, that's the episode guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I'll read them all time for the next one. That was chapter five. You know, and we everybody got acquainted with each other. You feel me? Uh, you know, I won't say it was uneventful, but it, it was eventful, but not really a lot of shit, you know? It was just you know, it was just, you know, just some shit going down. Peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read them all. Tap into the next one. Love y'all.